So what I want to show you is JZombie. And one of the things that JZombie is, is it's a way for you to synchronize the state of your Java objects across several processes or several servers. So you can have different Java objects and if they get updated on one server, JZombie will automatically propagate all those updates to all the other objects of that same type or ID on different servers. So let me give you an example. We're just going to define some class here. So I just define some class that has a name property and we're reading in lines from the user, setting the object's name, then printing the object. Nothing too fancy. So there you go. So what if we want to synchronize, what if we have like five different processes running and every instance of object in each process needs to have the same state? Well, JZombie will help us out a lot there. I'll show you how easy JZombie makes it. So first you just extend model. And then you add some methods. You've got to call super constructor with the executor you want JZombie to use when it makes updates to your model. JZombie will synchronize your objects through their ID. That's one of the ways. You can also specify a URL and ID pair um, to sync your, so all objects with the same URL and ID will stay in sync. But for this example, we're just going to keep objects with the same ID in sync, since that's the simplest thing we can do. And then whichever attributes you want to keep in sync, you add expose to. So if you have some attribute you don't want to keep in sync across servers, then you just don't add expose. So this don't sync string, since there's no expose annotation, won't be kept in sync with other objects on different servers. Every time we make a change to the object, we call save on it. And this is optional. If you want to get real-time updates, you do object.subscribe. So that way, he'll always receive updates from the other servers. You don't have to do subscribe, but if you don't do that, then you have to continuously pull for your state. Subscribe is probably the easiest thing to do. Maybe best to just do it in your constructor so you never forget to subscribe. So that's all there is to it. Now that some class extends model, he has his expose annotation, and these few extra super calls, it's going to stay in sync across all processes. Oh, and we also need to give it the ID. So all instances of some class with ID 1 will stay in sync across all servers and all processes. So to prove that, let's add another printout. So whenever an ob so if you make an update on server A, then server B, then an object on server B is going to get reset with the new state. So whenever a remote object gets set with some new state, this method end server reset is called. So I'm going to run two instances of this application, and you'll see I'll set the name on one, and then you'll see on the other instance J zombie synchronized will be print out to show you that the object has been updated 
to the state I set in process one. All right, so all recompiled. I'll start one there. You see, we get some log statements that we're subscribing for ID one. And if we set our name here in the left window, we'll see down here in the right that the name was updated. So we saw JZombie synchronize some name. If I change the name here, it'll synchronize back to this guy. So that's all there is to it. There's no IDLs, there's no message definitions, there's no middleware setup. You just extend model, you call subscribe, and you call save. And you're ready to go. Um, everything is dynamic. I can add more fields. And JZombie will just pick it all up and serialize it correctly for you. Now we're going to set our first name and our last name, and we'll see that both of these are going to be synchronized by JZombie across the two processes. So go ahead and control C it, recompile. So there you go, he was synchronized with a new state, first name and last name, both synchronized. Uh, you can even do, it doesn't have to be primitive types, you can even do lists, you can do other objects in here. So you can even synchronize complex types. Um, it doesn't have to be just structures with primitives in them. Uh, it'd help if our two string actually said something about our nested type. And we'll just make this public for ease of the demo. So there you go, hello there, and then hello there printed out again because we set our contain guy to be first name, last name, concatenated. So that's all there is to JZombie, super simple cross server, cross process synchronization. Uh, you can scale up to as many guys as you want. We launch another instance here.
bring up our consoles. And then you see an eclipse, even the eclipse instance even picked up the synchronization. So one last example to show you is a full on to do list. So we've got a list of things to do. I check items off. They get checked off in all the other lists. I add an item. They get added to all the other lists and subscribed. And this is obviously to-do list, so there's to-do items and there's an item list that make up the data model. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you the data model. Here's item. It's pretty simple. I completed in a name and get name, set name, get completed, set completed and I extend model and there's basically nothing else. There's this host here I can specify what server I want to synchronize with and end server reset and item list is even simpler. That's This is the list. Uh, you can JZombie has a collection which synchronizes a whole set of objects um, It gets special add and remove events and you know that's all there is to it. No Corba, no middleware, no message definitions. Just extend model and you're ready to run.